In this video, I want to show you how to encode, write a program that encodes and decodes messages using a substitution cipher. So substitution cipher is really, really basic. Um, what we have is an alphabet of characters that we're going to use, and then we're going to have a key. And so the way the encryption works is just every time you see an A in a message, we'll replace it with the corresponding letter and a key in the key, in this case, a K, and the Bs will get replaced with an L, and the Cs with the Xs, you know, and so on. So the key can be whatever you want. I just took my alphabet, copied it down here, and just scrambled it kind of randomly. Um, so anyway, that's that's how the Caesar cipher works. Now, what, what I want to do is take this message, attack at dawn, and I want to pass it off to my encrypted, my encrypt string, and I want this to go through each character in this message and return a string with all of the corresponding key characters in it. All right. So um, this is the, a, a lot of this is very much like a summation algorithm. Um, what we're going to do is make an accumulator variable to start. So I'll just say result equals and I'll just make an empty string. And I always like to put my return, write my return statement immediately so I don't forget at the end. And then I go into the middle and I do the the code itself, the logic. And so what I need to do is loop through this message string. So I'm going to say for every character in message. Um, when you're writing these kind of for loops, right, this variable can be anything you want it to be. Um, but what I like to do is always make it representative of the elements of whatever this data is. So this is a string. The elements in a string are characters. So I think that's a good variable name. C would be maybe an OK variable name. Um, all right, so now we're going to look at the character. And what I'm going to need to do is find the index of the character in the alphabet string so that I know which character to grab out of the key. And for this, there is a built-in Python function, and it's called find. And so what I'm going to do is make a new variable called location, and it's the syntax is message find and we're going to say a not message it's going to be alphabet find the character and so what this does is it looks in the alphabet string and it finds the index of whatever character is in the message and just so you can see what hap what's happening here I'll print it out Right. And so what we find out is the attack, like the A is in index zero in there, the T is in position 19, um, the other T is in 19, the other A is in zero, the C is in position two, zero, one, two. Remember, we're zero indexing here, right? So this is the location of every character in the string. And so when we want to build the decrypted or the encrypted message, I don't know, this isn't really important to me. What I'm going to do instead is say result plus equals, and I'm going to go key at the location, right? So when we when we check the A and we find out it's in location zero in the alphabet, we're going to take the result and we're going to append character zero from, um, from the key. When we get to the T in our top secret message, that's in position 19 in the alphabet, so we're going to grab the corresponding character at position 19 and um, from the key and append it to the result and so on. And so let's see if we build our message. All right. Worked out pretty good. Um, so now, how might decryption work? All right. So I've got this encrypted string. And what I did is I made it, you know, I've got a stub for a decrypt function. And what I want to do is take this encrypted message and write this encrypted message, pass it off to my decrypt function, and I'll store it here and then print it out. And, and hopefully I get it back exactly where I started. So um, hopefully you can see that encryption and decryption are very similar processes. In fact, the only difference is... Um, when you're decrypting, you're going, where is the character in the key? And then you grab the corresponding character from the alphabet. So I could just take all of this code and copy it here. 
And all right, so when we do the location, the message, remember this is now encrypted. So let's look in the key for the character. And so, so like when we see the letter K in our message, right, that's in position zero in the key. So it get, should get replaced with an A. If we see the letter U, right, it's in position 19 in the key. So we should replace it with a T. So this becomes the alphabet. And there we go. We're back where we started. Um, now, so let's, let's see what we can do to maybe expand the character set here. You know, so let's say I wanted to do some a space. That's a character we might want in a message. And let's do a little bit of punk punctuation, some a question mark and an exclamation mark. And so I'll go down here and I can, and we'll put a uh, exclamation mark in our sentence. Um, and we're also going to have to modify the key. And so we can take these four values and put them anywhere we want. So I'll put the space here, put the period here, I'll put the mark here, and I'll put the exclamation mark here. Um, so notice how, you know, in this, when you do a substitution cipher, there's no need for us to map letters, um, you know, le letters to um, other letters and punctuation to other punctuation. We can map any character to any character. And so we'll run it now, right? And this is, you know, you can see it's, it's good because we don't even have the spaces. Um, in our encrypted message anymore. So it's even harder to decipher because we don't know anything about word lengths. All right. Um, okay, just one final note about um, adding more characters to your um, character set here. Um, there are certain characters that you'll have a problem with when you're putting them in your Python code. So let's say, you know, we, we have the general says attack at dawn. And I actually want to include quotations, right? I want to actually include these quotations in my encrypted message. Well, um, so we're going to add, you know, so I want to be able to add the quote character here. And that's going to break my string and, and the quote character here, which breaks the code, right? This quote broke that. And so remember, we need to escape the extra quote characters and we'll have to do the same thing in our key. All right. And so, you know, this is actually in the alphabet. It's actually just a single character. And that means, you know, we also need to, you know, so if the quote character is part of our alphabet, that means we also have to put it in the key somewhere. And so I'll put it maybe here. Um, and so you can see the alphabet and the key are the same length again. And let's see if this works. All right, so everything looks like it works well. Um, got exactly what we wanted. You know, the only thing that's a little bit confusing now is, you know, because this is a single character right here, um, you know, I like the backslash is not the U and the quote is not the V, right? The align, this is the U and now the I is the V and the J is the W and so on. So the alignment is a little bit, is a little bit off. Um, there's one more thing that might happen. It's like, well, oh, you know, let's suppose you wanted to expand your alphabet to include the backslash character, right? So let's put a, you know, backslash, you know, let's put a backslash character in here. Um, this, I'll put it at the beginning just to not, okay. So we have backslash characters just because it's kind of hard to see there. We have a backslash character here. Remember the backslash, um, what it does is it indicates that the next character is special, right? So the backslash and the next character are counted as one character. And, you know, so we don't want the backslash and the A to be treated as anything. So what you have to do for a single backslash is paste two. And then I'll just go to my key and paste a single backslash in there. And so it still works the same. And even if I had, I don't know if I had a reason, the general slash
uh, commander set, or actually, you know, that's a forward slash. Um, well, we'll just we'll just throw a backslash in the message and just show you. You know, if we did two backslashes here. Um, actually, a single backslash character and the encryption and decryption worked. All right, so um, hopefully this algorithm makes sense. And so what you should start thinking about is, you know, what if I wanted to expand the alphabet to include more characters, right? Certainly you could um, expand this to include all of the characters on your keyboard you could type, and, and then you could scramble them to uh, make any key you want. Right. The only the only thing tricky about expanding the character set is just making sure that you, you know, backslash your quote characters and you backslash your backslashes. All right. That's all there is. And if you have questions, let me know.